How's it going everyone? It's Adam from Life of Adam, team back with a brand new life card tip video. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over CPR AED test questions that you're going to see on the life card test. Now, it's very common for a lot of life card courses to have the CPR AED written multiple choice questions to be online. So let's say before the course even starts, before you even do all the pool stuff, like you'll be able to take this portion online and pass the test. So I'm just gonna give you guys some questions that you're probably going to see with the answers that follow. Now, before I dive into this, if you guys are new the channel make a bunch of life current tip videos about how to pass the course how to pass the swing pre-test at the beginning basically everything you need to know about being a lifeguard so definitely consider subscribing and liking the video if you're new to the channel to also help show your support so that more people can become lifeguards and learn from my videos now to start us off the first question this is like a basic question but it's very common that you'll probably get something along these lines it might be worded a little differently but it's the same core elements and the question is CPR should be performed on a victim who is, and they'll give you a list of like four to five reasons. It'll be someone who's conscious but can't breathe. It'll be someone who has an obstructed airway. The answer is gonna be someone who is in a cardiac arrest or is unconscious with an obstructed airway. Because as you know, if someone passes out and they're a choking victim, you do compressions and you do CPR to unclog the airway, just like if it's normal CPR. So the answer is someone who's in a cardiac arrest or someone who's unconscious with an obstructed airway. Now this is another question that actually made me think for a while the first time I took the live grading course. And the question is, after you use the AED and the AED says, no shock is advised, what do you do? Now, a lot of people think like, oh, you gotta reassess, like check for pulse and breathing again. Some people think like give ventilations, but the right answer is to continue CPR, perform CPR for an additional two minutes. So you just hop right into that. Now, as you know, you could do CPR with multiple guards, multiple rescuers. So two person CPR, there's gonna be questions about that. So a common question that's related to two person CPR is, what is a cycle for two person CPR on let's say like an infant? And the options are gonna to try to fool you. It's gonna be like 30 compressions, two breaths, or it's gonna be 10 compressions, two breaths. The right answer is gonna be 15 compressions and two breaths, that is a cycle two-person CPR for an infant. Now, another question is that you're giving ventilations to an unconscious adult, and you notice that when you're giving the breath, the chest is not rising. So just a little hint, that's a sign that the breaths aren't going through completely. What should you do? You should suspect that, okay, something's clogging the airway, and the right thing to do, they'll try to fool you, say like, oh, try to breathe harder, or start chest compressions, or check for pulse and breathing, and the right answer is to re-tilt the head and attempt another ventilation. It's very important that you re-tilt the head before you just give another ventilation, because you want to reset and adjust it so that maybe it's the angle or the positioning that was preventing it from going through and it's also a way to confirm that. Now, another question is along the lines of which victim do you prioritize? So let's say there's an event where something falls, let's say like the, the slide breaks and there's multiple people on the slide or maybe like the bleachers of a gym at a swim meet collapse. Which victim do you attend to first? A victim that you should always take care of first is an unconscious victim. If there's someone who's conscious and like scrape their arm or bang their leg, whatever it is, the unconscious victim should always be a priority. Now this question, I guarantee that you'll get it on your CPR test. And the question is, let's say you're dealing with a smaller child and you put the AED pads like you normally would on the victim's chest, but you notice that the victim's just really small, it's a small child, and there's a risk that the pads will touch each other, will be in contact while using the AED, what should you do? And the right answer is to place one pad in the middle of the chest and the other one on the victim's back. So it'll be one in the front in the center and one in the back. Now, another common question, especially when you're doing CPR, is how deep should a compression be? Like how hard should you force the compression? Because obviously you hear stories about like people who like break people's ribs while doing CPR and like how deep should the compression be and the force be on the sternum? And you're gonna get answers like one inches, one and a half inches, three inches. The right answer, the sweet spot is two inches. And this is for an adult because obviously you don't wanna be doing this force too hard to an infant who's like very fragile. Now going off of that, sticking with compressions, another question will be along the lines of to ensure sure that a compression is fully effective, what needs to take place and what they're trying to get to or allude to is that what needs to happen each rep. In each rep, the chest needs to fully recoil before giving another compression. 
because if you don't let the chest go all the way up and recoil, you're staying at the bottom so it's not a full motion, which will really help the heart get back into a rhythm and kickstart it. Okay, a couple more questions. When doing a primary assessment, what's the first thing you should do after ensuring that the scene is safe? There might be questions like, what's the first thing you do? The answer would be ensure that the scene is safe, but what is the step after you know that the scene is safe? And the answer is check for responsiveness. Because when you're in class, when you're practicing on dummies, you're trained to say like, sir, ma'am, are you okay? With like a tap on your shoulder. So it's very important to check for responsiveness as the second thing that you do. Now, last question, this goes along the lines of like two person CPR. What is true about operating a bag valve mask? Now, if you remember the bag valve mask is like a normal resuscitation mask, except it's attached to like a bag where you can like squeeze the end of it, which will help air get into, it's like a, basically doing a ventilation, it'll squeeze and the air will go into the victim. Like what do you need in order to operate a bag valve mask? And the answer is you need multiple rescuers. So you need two rescuers. So I hope you found this video helpful and you got some answers to some questions that you may have had. Definitely like and subscribe if you're new to the channel to share your support and I'll see you all in the next upload. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.